This is me using terrain brushes to paint a mountain in vanilla Minecraft. But making this happen was no small feat. I mean, look at all these command blocks. And by far the most difficult part is finding out where the player is looking. Because there's no single command in Minecraft that can do this quickly. That's why it takes up almost a third of all the commands. But I figured it out. And I've been using this in a lot of my contraptions, like this working camera that uses maps. So if you like commands and you want to learn how you can use this technique in some of your builds, then stick around, because I'm going to show you. So this line of command blocks I'm standing on is the heart of the mechanism, and it looks intimidating, but don't worry, it's just four key commands that need to be copied a couple times. Now I invented this technique for my vanilla terrain brushes project, and if you want to see how that worked out, then I'll put a card to the video on screen. But a lot of you guys commented that you wanted to know how the raycasting worked for that machine, and that's what this video is, a tutorial on the raycasting. So let's jump into the mechanics of how it all works. And right before we get into this, I wanted to tell you that I'll be linking the structure with the raycasting command blocks in the description of this video. And so if you want to try it out and use it in any of your creations, feel free to download it down there. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe because I like to make a lot of creations using command blocks and I like to upload tutorials like this when I have a good component. Now the concept of raycasting is pretty simple because all you need to do is shoot a beam from the player going forward until it hits something then return information about what it hit. Now the most simple method that you can use to achieve this goes like this. The subject, in this case the armor stand, will summon an entity like the boats here and then it will just shoot it forward until it hits a block and it will give data about what block it hit. In this case the data that I care about is what block it hit so that I can repeat this on a map to create a picture. And this method works, though it's very slow and ineffective. And the best way that I could describe it to you is that that old method is like a mechanical clock and that it's very clunky and inefficient. And this new method is like a digital clock. It's much faster and much more efficient. And that's why I use it in a build where I need precision and I need speed. And so we'll take a look at the commands that run this contraption and I'll explain to you how it works. And it all starts with these two command blocks. These command blocks, when you flip the lever, will summon an armor stand and then it will give it a tag. You'll see this armor stand has the tag AS1. The name isn't important, but it is important that we have it distinguished. And now for the big ones, and I promise they're not as scary as they look. We're going to start with this big line on the right. This is called score distance. And they're all pretty much the same command. This is what it looks like. And so this is executing the command at the player, which is going to be our subject in this example. And it's going to test if there is air right in front of the player. And if there is air, then we assume that there is not air two blocks in front of the player. And then every command block will go through one block further, testing to see if there is air at that block. And if there is, assuming that there's not air one block further. Every time that it makes an assumption about where there is not air, it will set it to a scoreboard. And this scoreboard is called the cursor scoreboard. And I'm gonna display it on the right side of the screen so that we can see what's going on. In my case, I test for every block between one and 30 blocks in front of the player. And then I do 10 more blocks, however, I'm only testing every other block. This loses resolution, however, for a project like mine, where it was very far away, you didn't really need that resolution, and it provided enough information while saving me a lot of time. So while it is technically infinitely expandable, you have to explore the costs of expanding it for your creation. And now we're going to look at that other row of command blocks, and this is where our armor stand comes in. So I'm going to summon us a new one with that tag and all of these second row of command blocks are doing the same thing as well. What they're doing is testing if the score of our cursor scoreboard matches a number. If it matches two, then we know that there's air two blocks in front of us, but there's not air three blocks. So we send that armor stand to three blocks in front of us to get data about what we're looking at. And much like the other row of command blocks, every single one of these command blocks is just testing for one block further. And so now if we turn both these command blocks on, now when we look around, you're gonna see just the head of our armor stand poking out of the ground. And to make it a little easier to see what's going on here, I've recreated a little scenery out of glass panes so that we can see the armor stand. And so you'll see as we move around where we're looking, that armor stand is gonna go to the block closest to us where we're looking at. And you'll see on the right side of our screen that the cursor scoreboard is changing and it's telling us how far away the block is that we're looking at. And since I added that max distance of 40, you'll see when we're not looking at anything, the armor stand will just default to 40 blocks away from you. And it's actually pretty far. 
and it does look like the armor stand kind of lags behind, however this is mainly a visual glitch and it's actually very precise and very accurate. And one feature that I decided to add into this is a minimum distance, that way you don't accidentally click the armor stand. And so this way, as you get close to the glass, it just pushes the armor stand further in. However, as long as we go further away, it stays on the surface. And you may have noticed that when we initially casted the ray, testing if there's air in front of us, we positioned it 1.5 blocks above the player. This number just happens to be where the player's camera is. So that you can see right there, it knows we're looking at the block, and just a few pixels above, it knows we're not looking at the block. And you probably also notice this third row of command blocks. All this is gonna do is it's gonna make our armor stand invisible. And then it's gonna add these redstone particles around every side of that armor stand. And so when it's turned on, you'll see we just get a nice visual indicator of where our armor stand is. And looking at glass with it, you can see all the six points that are around the armor stand. And that's all there is to it. So if you wanna try these command blocks, I've attached a structure with these lines of command blocks and the summoning command blocks in the description below. And it will probably require a little bit of tweaking. However, the basic components are there and you can use them in any of your creations. And I hope everything made sense, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer any of them. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like because it would help me out and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Did you guys know your third person camera can just go through glass like that? I didn't.